All right, all right, all right. So topic of today is how to tackle some of the common coding challenges or obstacles that you may encounter. So the coding journey itself can be very interesting and fun, but it doesn't come without challenges, okay? So we're going to talk about how we can tackle some of these challenges and how we can also maintain motivation during our coding journey. Okay, so with these different strategies that I'm going to be talking about, you'll be able to better conquer any coding challenges that you may experience. Okay, so first let's talk about how to stay motivated. So one of the quickest way to lose motivation is trying to take on a very huge monumental coding task that you yourself don't feel equipped to handle that task. And usually when you feel like the task ahead of you is too huge, you quickly start to lose motivation. So my advice to you is to break down any coding challenge or coding problem that you have into smaller tasks. So for example, suppose we are trying to build some type of website, okay? This could be any type of website. Instead of focusing on the bigger picture or the entire website, you can just focus on trying to make the best login page possible, okay? So basically you're breaking down the task into a smaller task, which is just addressing the login part of the website or software. And because that is a much more achievable goal, you're going to naturally feel more motivated to complete that task. And also try to track your progress. So what I typically do is set a goal to tackle probably three or four main objectives throughout the course of the week. And each time I tackle that objective, I just cross it off on my notepad. So at least I can see the progress that I'm making. And visually being able to see your progress will keep you motivated. And don't forget to celebrate your achievements. I'm sure you can think of different ways to celebrate any type of goal that you've achieved. And it doesn't have to be a huge celebration. So something as small as, let's say you reach a significant milestone, you're going to reward yourself by watching like three episodes of your favorite show or something like that, okay? Like I mentioned, it doesn't have to be a massive celebration as long as you acknowledge the progress that you're making. It will keep you motivated. And one thing that is really important to realize is your motivation for whatever you're doing, okay? And this doesn't necessarily only apply to coding, but with any type of goal that you set, you should at least have an idea of what your inspiration for that specific goal is, okay? So for instance, some people are more motivated by um, inventing something, creating something, um, discovering some type of innovation, or your motivation could be money. If you know that whatever you're going to be developing is going to bring you some good income, also keep that in mind. And for some people, your motivation could be impacts, okay? Just knowing that hundreds and thousands of users are using your software or you're able to impact several people with whatever you're developing could be a big motivating factor. Or you might be simply inspired by being able to solve problems, okay? So whatever your inspiration is, just focus on that and keep that in the back of your mind whenever you are starting to feel lack of motivation. And if you're able to immerse yourself in the environments that motivate you, and by environments, I'm talking about surrounding yourself with people that inspire you or people who have achieved the goal that you're trying to reach, if you're constantly watching success stories of people who are achieving what you're trying to achieve, you're never going to feel a lack of motivation because it's human nature. You can't be 
inspired and not motivated at the same time. So focus on things that inspire you. And if you want, you can even immerse yourself in a community that motivates you, okay? So for instance, I discovered this community on Twitter called 30 Days of Programming. I think it's 30 Days of Code or something like that, where people just are sharing what they've been able to achieve within 30 days of learning how to code. And just being immersed in that type of community even motivates you to learn and improve your abilities. Also, the act of sharing your experiences and seeking advice from people who are more experienced than you will keep you inspired. So now let's talk about failures, okay? So in programming, it may seem like you are failing a lot, but don't necessarily see your failures as inadequacies, but more so a stepping stone or a moment of learning. You have to adopt a growth mindset, okay? So to give you an example, my very first app that I produced, uh, which was Math for the Brain, it on some level was a successful app, okay? I started receiving a lot of downloads. So for my second app, I thought maybe it would be as successful as the first one, okay? But after releasing that app, it was by download metrics, it turned out to be a failure because not a lot of people were interested in that. And that app was just a small puzzle game. And to be honest, it wasn't that interesting. But instead of seeing that as a failure, I was just looking at it as a learning process, okay? Every single thing that I developed, I've learned something from it, either a new technology or a new way to market that thing or some resources that would help me develop faster and more efficiently. And like I mentioned before, most of these advices apply to several different areas of life. It's not just coding. In life, any type of setback or failure can be seen as a learning opportunity. So don't view yourself as a failure or inadequate if you are not able to achieve a certain goal, okay? But one thing I'll say is try to learn from any failure that you've had, okay? So for example, for this slide flow game, I learned quite a lot of things. First, I learned that just because you build something doesn't mean that you are going to have people have interest in it, okay? There are some things that go viral and gain traction very quickly. And there's some other things that you would need to put some more time in trying to market it and let the world know that it exists. So that's just an example of a lesson that I learned from a failure that I had. And also, it's important to identify where you can improve. So using that same example, instead of going all out and building an app that I haven't even tested to see if people really like, I could have just include a section for users to provide your feedback on the app, okay? And then based on the user's feedback, I'll try to figure out what people enjoy more and what people enjoy less. And then as I'm building the software app, it will just naturally evolve into something that users really enjoy, okay? So I learned that from my second app. So when I got to creating my third app, I relied heavily on user feedback to the point where I added a feature where the user can contact me directly to provide some suggestions or feedback directly within the app. And I made it very easy for them so they don't have to go into the App Store or Play Store to leave reviews. They can just contact me directly. So that's an example of learning from your mistakes and figuring out where you can improve. Okay, so now let's talk about building resilience. Because with coding and with any type of endeavor that you pursue, 
there's going to come a time where doing too much of that thing might make you feel burnt out and one way to tackle this once again is to break down your task into smaller more manageable tasks the more overwhelming your task feels the more burnt out you're going to feel the more it seems like your task is easy and achievable the less overwhelmed you're going to feel also don't be afraid to seek help there's a huge coding community out there with any type of coding roadblock that you've experienced i'm pretty sure that someone else somewhere has experienced something similar if not the same before so stack overflow is actually a very useful website where you can ask questions or present some of the coding challenges that you are experiencing and someone out there would be able to help you also take advantage of some of these new ai tools nowadays you can simply find an ai tool that can read your code analyze it and try to determine what is causing your error or how you can improve your code. So for me personally, the way I use AI to help me is to add comments to my code. So sometimes I might write some long code and because I don't want to get distracted or I'm in the flow of writing the code, I may forget to add some comments to my code that will help me better understand my code when I look back at it on a later date, but I can simply use AI to try to determine what I was trying to do at different parts of my code and add the comments or notes in my code. Also for some of the small coding tasks, you can simply just use AI to generate the code for you. Okay. So that the only part where you're involved in it would be the creativity or coming up with the ideas for your code. So don't feel like you necessarily need to do everything by yourself from scratch. You can use tools out there to help you develop some code faster. There's several AI tools out there, but the one I personally use is ChatGPT. Okay. You can try that out for yourself. And also don't forget to take breaks. I can't emphasize this enough. So right now, as you can see here, I am on a resort, okay? And I'm basically stepping away from my normal flow of things, okay? And that is because if you don't take time to practice some type of self-care, you're going to experience burnouts very quickly. And when you're burnt out, you don't feel the motivation to continue whatever task you're doing. You can simply go to your local gym or your local spa every once in a while just to break your routine. Or if you're working with a company and you have some vacation days, make use of those vacation days and try to go somewhere that is not normally part of your routine. Because sometimes you might be in a situation where you just can't solve some problem that you're having, okay? And for me, what really works is stepping away from that problem because it leads to fresh new insights. Sometimes you'll be doing a totally different activity and then the solution to your problem might just cross your mind. And being in new environments or different environments naturally makes you think more outside the box. So don't forget to take breaks. So by implementing these strategies that I've talked about so far, hopefully you'll be able to better overcome your challenges and maintain motivation in anything that you do. So in short, just embrace the challenges that you encounter, learn from your mistakes and celebrate your progress. I hope I've been able to help you in some way today.